Hi, Dr. Goldberg here, continuing our infectious disease series. Today we're talking about fever of unknown origin. This will be our first uh, review. We'll have a review, review number two will be coming. Uh, let's talk about fever of unknown origin. So FUO now is divided into classic FUO, uh, number one. Number two, uh, fever associated with nosocomial infection or hospital acquired infection. Number three, fever associated with neutropenia. And number four, fever associated with HIV. Today we're going to talk basically just about classic fever of unknown origin, which is basically where we have a temperature of 101 or greater on several occasions, usually over several weeks. We see many patients with this in the office as well as in the hospital. Um, remember that anywhere from 15 to 25 percent of the time, no matter how many tests we do, we never find out why people have fever. But Today we're going to look at uh, eight common causes of fever of unknown origin. One of the things that I teach my students is uh, we have to find something in the history or the physical exam or the labs or the x-rays to direct us when we're trying to hone in on what's causing the fever. Uh, but let's, let's look at eight common areas. Number one, uh, if there's cancer present, there's certain cancers that cause fever. Uh, certainly GI cancers are common. Common, uh, it's commonly associated with fever, especially with the metastasized to the liver. Uh, renal cell cancers uh, definitely are associated with fever, as are lymphomas and leukemias. Also, uh, atrial myxomas are associated with fever. So remember that uh, with a high sed rate, uh, an occult cancer can be the issue. Uh, number two, granulomatous disease associated with fever. So granulomatous disease is going to be associated with sarcoidosis. Or an occult fungal infection may be affecting the liver or lung. Granulomas uh, disease can be non caseating or it can be caseating. If it's caseating, that's going to be related probably to, to TB or to a typical TB. The third area is collagen vascular disease. So, uh, one of my first cases of seeing this was in somebody with polymyalgia rheumatica and in the setting of fever, but other collagen vascular diseases such as lupus or um, Wegner's disease can be associated with fever. Uh, the fourth uh, area, of course, is medication side effects. So people who are on uh, antipsychotic medications or who are on uh, seizure medications uh, or who are on uh, even antibiotics sometimes, uh, we can see a fever uh, in those settings, sometimes associated with eosinophilia and rash, but sometimes not. So be uh, conscious of, of uh, that area. Endocrine uh, problems can be sometimes associated with fever. Uh, this would be Addison's disease uh, or a thyroid uh, problem. Hyperthyroidism can be associated. The sixth area are hematomas or blood clots. So sometimes we'll see uh, people with bad pelvic fractures where they bleed into their pelvis, get a large hematoma, and they'll have a, have a femur, fever from this but not have any evidence of infection. Seventh area is ENT infections, such as d occult dental infections, uh, gum disease, or even sinus infections. So watch out for that. And uh, lastly today, we'll just mention arthropod bites, so uh, especially tick bites. So take a good history regarding ticks because in Wisconsin, for example, we can see Lyme disease. We can see Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Uh, we can see ehrlichiosis uh, disease or anisplasmosis. So those are the things that we need to be conscious of uh, when we have people who've had arthropod bites and have a fever of unknown origin. Of course, they'll often have other physical findings to help us. So signing off for now on the FUO number one. Thanks.